Hey guys, Yosh here. Welcome back to another BGJ Breakdown. Today, I'm going to break down Roto Brothers' Darth Choke. This may be one of hot topics at the moment since he conquered who's number one championships last weekend. Two brothers, they do a lot of interesting techniques and mission, especially Darth Choke, that may be their signature techniques. They use Darth Choke slightly different from each other. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the way how to set up and how to finish that stroke. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, let's start with understanding of that stroke, the structure. This is a kind of hand and arm choke in a different angle. Like uh, doing a triangle choke with our arms, but how to apply it is slightly different to the pure choke. That's more like a neck crank or windpipe choke. So that's this situation. I wanna get my right arm under his neck and arm. This may be similar to making a bravo grip in gi. Then during the time I do, I need to trap his arm under my belly or in front of my chest. So this is the first condition. Then once I can make the proper frame, I connect my hands together. You need to make the smallest diameter in order to lock your arms like this. Especially this time, I have to trap his shoulder, neck in an angle like this. So if I cannot trap his arm properly, let's say he starts crossing his elbow like this. So in that case, I can no longer reach it. So that's why at the beginning of the time, we need to coordinate a situation that we completely open our partner's top arm, like this position. Then, Generally speaking, people like to push the head to the side as well, but once we can clear it, we should be able to lock our hands like this. This is the same as rear naked choke grip like this. So this is really tricky. We need to be able to call in the angle like I explained it. Otherwise, we can't make it. This is not a gable grip hold, this one. Then once we set up, there's been several ways to finish it. Some people like to go like this, like Edwin Najmi. He likes to switch the neck crank, that's why he switched the hips to the other side. It's more like leaning to the side. That's a huge amount of pressure on his neck, like a neck crank. Roto Brothers, what they like to do is slightly different. That's more like apparent pressure instead of twisting it. So that angle, I want you to understand. We like to stay 120 degrees with your opponent. Not like no sass, cross, or towards the leg side. And this angle. As we do so, we can use our chest to trap our arm. Then from the bottom, we can squeeze it up. So this is how they finish. So here is the chest like this. So there's the pressure on side of his neck, or even there's on a windpipe choke. Especially a lot of brothers, their arms is pretty long. That's why they can set up very easily. Then next one, I'm gonna show you how to set up tie lotro and carry lotro, how they want to do. Then Rotor Brothers, they don't stick to the position since they more focus on grappling or ADCC rules. That's why they like to do like a make kind of hold or in distance. Then as you can see that they like to do like a step pass like this. So this is a great way to take an advantage, technical advantage. Since it's in the position like this, he may be able to get into leg entanglement position. Then for Rotoros, since they make this type of lock, it's easy to approach the no south like this. This one, he, they like to do a lot too. Then from this position, there's a way to set up like a no south control or when they get to the turtle, front headlock position. The first one, let's just do is the arm drag. So from here, step in the tie like this. Then definitely he wants to use his hands like this. So that case, just holding here. So this is a situation like I explained in the structure, I start open his arm like this. So from here, it's gonna be explosive action, like slide into in one action. I'm gonna dive into the dust entry. This is very like a rotor side, explosive movement. So here, holding it here, then start driving it. You can even take a hook stamp like this. At the beginning of the time we start with, the frame is not tight enough. That's why you keep it tight with the chest and start locking it like this. Then I'm gonna show you later how to finish in further details. In order to finish, like I explained, it needs to be 120 degrees, then putting their opponents back on the ground. So this is the perfect case. Since he can no longer come up to this way or other way, it's pretty easy to finish it. So here, like this. Then there's the other way, just giving up the position, 
Also, this is a very typical idea. They like to do that. Since they don't stick to the position, they even willing to give up the position to save the friend to finish the mission. Even this time, after sliding in, tie, they lie down on the floor. They start making the flame like this. So in this situation, opponent wants to get on the knees like in a turtle. But this is a situation we start making it. Can you see this? I trap his arm with a dust lock like this. Even this time, he's using his body weight to trap his own arm. So this is a great way to do that. This is an idea. We can now finish that shock if your opponents, they're on their knees like this. So it needs to be inactivated. So here in this position like this, like the Kimura trap, I start swinging my leg. By the time I do, I got leverage that I can flip his body to make him inactive. The movement is very similar to Kimura. I start swinging my leg. By the time I do, I'm gonna roll with him. I'm even making a momentum that I'm gonna get on my knees. As you can see that we get back to the original position that we can finish that choke. Okay, as long as see their matches, they do over and over. Whenever the opponent get on their knees, they fall on the mat, then roll with. Until they can make the angle and to make the opponent inactive, like putting their back on the ground to finish it, then they use the belly to finish. This is how Tai Loto likes to do. The next one, Ken, how he likes to do, especially last weekend, he did it in the final, who's number one championships. When I saw his matches, seems like he managed to make body lock from a lot of positions, from a guard pass to set up, even from headlock position, instead of his making a pure prone headlock, he likes to make her body lock from that position. Let's try this one. So he gets the turtle like this. So in that situation, like wrestling on jujitsu, we like to make this position approach the turtle. Not like this, K, what they like to do. More like this position, like body lock. Then it's important to keep their opponent's upper body on the ground. That's why it seems like I managed to point forward like this. This is similar to the adjustment guillotine, like this. As he does so, and cannot posture up, then I have more leverage to open his elbows, like making a coordination step by step. Then there's been a really interesting setup Ken did in last weekend. So from here, by the time he switched to the dust choke, there's been a gap between here and here. Then definitely L can be able to defend his neck like this. So that's why what Ken is very interesting. Instead of unlocking it, can I use the hand on this side, like this? Then, you should be able to trap one of the arms like this. Then, other arm goes over. The entry is similar to the tie he did. So from here, dive underneath the position. As soon as I dive, we can set up the frame like this. Then, we just, we set up the dark choke. Then, as you can see that, this is still active position for him to defend. If he opens this wider, it's gonna be way harder to finish it later. That's why before it happens, we need to roll to inactivate your opponent. So this position, swing your leg. Then when the time is swing, you gotta go with your opponent. Otherwise, you can't roll your opponent away. So use his legs as much as possible. Then you can roll away like when the time is come, we can come to the position. Like I explained in the last one, your opponent may on, get on their knees. That case, Lotoros, they like to do the same thing, roll over and over again. And you can see that from the top view, we are making it 100 degrees like this, not on the side. On the side, just in case, he may be able to trap my leg like this. If that happens, it may be difficult for Lotoros, what they like to do. They like to stay in angle, like a 120 degrees, use their chest like this. Then it's gonna be way harder for their opponent to escape as well. Basically, they just throw from this room. As they explode, that's a huge amount of pressure to pin the position and apply pressure. Then from now, then using the braid of our arm to squeeze it from bottom. So this is how Roto Brothers likes to do that. So here, like this. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please just hit the like button. Give us any comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Thank you. Catch you guys next one. Bye.